All right, it broke today. The news, the Broncos had fired their head coach, Nathaniel Hackett, after the debacle yesterday. Certainly plenty to talk about. So here joining me, our Broncos insider, Mike Kliss, is with us today. Our good friend from Nine Sports, Jacob hey. Toby. And our special guest star from 104.3, the fan himself, DMAC, Darren McKee. It is officially the end of days when <laughs> I'm appearing on 9 News. So tell me, though, normally you'd be on the radio today. There's a lot to talk about today. Are you, do you have much to say that you can't get out? Where's Derek Wolf? Where's my show? Tom, I, I can't stop talking. No. So whether you invited me or it was a radio show or I was standing on the corner or this poor soul has suffered my wrath more times than not, this might be the third time we've actually talked today. Yeah. You know, we're, we're talking about it. There's, there's a lot to talk about with this. But, Mike, let's start with did Nathaniel Hackett ever have a chance or was he just in over his head? Because there were times it looked that way. Yeah, right from the start. You know, the season opening at Seattle with the 46-yard line, go out there and try to kick a 64-yarder at sea level, Brandon McManus. Didn't have much chance. Peyton Manning on the Manning oh. cast was saying, time out, time out, time out. I think that hurt him a little bit as far as the optics. But that was a bad decision that it was difficult for Hackett to overcome. The second game, the crowd is mocking the Broncos by chanting down the time clock. They have to hire Jerry Rosberg. Who, by the way, isn't that ironic? Jerry Rosberg's nowhere to be seen to start the season. Now he's a head <laughs> coach, coach of the Denver Broncos. But uh, I think Hackett had a chance after the last two games. They had a, a better offense against the Chiefs. They rallied to beat Arizona. And the thinking was if they finished strong the last three games, he might be brought back. I think George Payton wanted to bring him back but for a second Jacob, year. he's been in the minds of many a dead man walking for a while now. Does this fix anything? Does What, what, what does this get them, this firing today? It feels good to some Broncos fans, really, but does it do anything? Yeah, I, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think they could go out and lose the next two mm -hmm. by 50 each. You know, I mean, I just I, – Russell Wilson is at the forefront of the problems, I think, just with all the interceptions and, and things like that. But I think guys are down right now it's just it's tough to when you get a head coach fired it's tough to keep the morale high and, and I know you're you know your number one problem is Russell Wilson right I mean, my man Jacob nailing it right from the get-go I've heard you, you talk it. about it before I mean you you think that is the number one issue it's the, the number one issue, issue. Was, was taken care of today you said well but, you said today on the radio yeah. it's not him as much as his contract is, is the number one problem. well I, I I include Russell and his contract kind of in, in the same mess and George Payton is problem number two injuries are number three and Hackett was number four so you got rid of the fourth worst problem so you need to mitigate or eliminate eliminate the other three problems and everybody is talking about handling Russell Wilson you could go nuclear and and just tank the whole thing the cap hit is brutal it's absolutely brutal but the goal would be an 0 and 17 season and drafting Caleb Williams out of USC that's the goal is to go 0 and 17 that's the nuclear option which is the hardest thing for anybody really to do and unlikely to happen aside from that you need somebody that's going to mitigate the damage so I say the Broncos should tr try to hire Jim Harbaugh because he would have no problems dealing with Russell Wilson like he dealt with Alex Smith and um, with uh, Kaepernick. Kaepernick and he would have no problems whatsoever being George Payton's boss. But can you hire a coach if your goal is to go 0-17? I mean, what coach is going to sign up for yeah, that? Yeah, you, you almost need a stopgap. You almost need Jerry Rosberg to coach another year if you want to, if 0-17. They're not there yet. I know what DMAC is saying, and that's uh, uh, not an implausible strategy, but that's not where they're at. Their, their feeling, what they did today, was they sent the message. They think Russell Wilson, who was a top 10 quarterback nine of his previous 10 years, including last year, is salvage, salvageable and fixable. And someone who comes in is going to be able to fix Russell Wilson. That's where they're going. That's where they're going. Yeah, and they're, they're wrong. They're wrong about that, unfortunately. But let's talk about the decision that's going to be made because the Penner statement today, Greg Penner's making the call. He gave a subtle vote of confidence to George Payton. But what did, what did you read into that? Oh, I, I, I took it as he has confidence in Payton for you know maybe the next couple months just to just to <laughs> just to, a just short to get through a short leash. Yeah, I mean, Payton has has decimated you know draft picks, has given Russ all this money. Uh, has signed Randy Gregory, who's now suspended for a game. That hasn't worked out. He's been hurt all year long, and now he gets suspended. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think Peyton's on a short leash. I mean, how can he the not? The new be? coach, Peyton will come back because they need him for, you know, the back end of the roster and waiver claims and all these administrative things that he's very good at. But he's not going to have the power he had. Right. Penner's picking the coach, not George Peyton. But does that concern and, you? Because Penner's never done this before. 
He's never picked yeah. a head coach before. Well, I Does mean, that concern you at all? I mean, George Payton picked this last coach. Um, no, you 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 think George? <laughs> you'd like to see or think George Payton needs to be excised? That do you think Penner needs to find a new guy? I mean, he was a fine assistant guy. Like he, you know, was great finding Baron Browning in the fifth round or whatever. I, I don't care if you want to keep George around as an an assistant. He just can't be in charge of making any more decisions when it comes to quarterback. Okay, listen, this is simple with football. It's not that complicated. It's about finding a quarterback and developing him. And either you got one or you don't got one. They don't got one. Period. The end. If, you, if they hire Jim Harbaugh, he's in charge. Well, not this George is, Payton. This now if you hire Frank Reich, they're together. They both report. Not Frank Reich doesn't report to Payton. Frank Reich would report to Greg Penner. So it's uh, it, he's going to be clipped a little bit, George. But this is about vision, and it always is with an NFL team. Yeah. But this now is not a one-year plan or a two-year plan. They are a couple of years away from mitigating the, the problems they've developed over these years. We're going to talk about some of those problems, where Russell Wilson stands, and then the, the dilemma about Peyton, Peyton, and Peyton. <laughs> Sean Peyton, George Peyton, and Peyton Manning may be having a role in all this. We'll do that when we come back. Yeah, the Broncos are going to have to do it again. Time to hire another new head coach as they head into the 2023 season. DMAC, Mike Kliss, Jacob Toby with me here today. And uh, when you talk about Peyton, Peyton, and Peyton, it's a matter of, you know, Sean Peyton is probably the most accomplished NFL head coach that might be available this year, but it would come with a price. Then you have George Peyton, who may or may not get to make this decision. And then there's Peyton Manning out in the wings. And, and I think a lot of people wish and hope that Peyton Manning would somehow get involved. Although he seems pretty happy doing what he's doing these days. If you want to bring Peyton Manning in, you'd have to buy Omaha Productions for a billion dollars and make them generational wealth, because I think that's what the goal of the Manning family is doing. Now, I'm all for that, and I don't want to speak for somebody's billions, but go for it as far as I'm concerned, because what has Peyton Manning failed at? So I would be thrilled if Peyton Manning was making football decisions, and he would be an executive. But he'd be given up a lot um, to do that. And I don't know if he's quite comfortable in that role. One hindrance is his deal with Caesars. And he's got the whole Manning family. Mm -hmm. The NFL and its uh, um, contradictory rules on gambling, uh, I don't think would allow Peyton Manning to become an executive, football executive, and still have sponsorship with Caesars, which is a, which is a gambling site. And it's paying Cooper. It's paying his dad, Archie, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Eli. And so, and I think that contract runs for a couple more years. So he would have to work, and this is the way Peyton wants it, behind the scenes right. as kind of an unofficial, maybe paid, I don't know, maybe not paid, advisor with Greg Penner. I do think him and Greg Penner talk. What about Sean Payton? Because uh, I'm not sure that Sean Payton goes onto that list of people who I wonder if they want this job. This job would not yeah. be the most desirable of the jobs, but you're, you, you say you think Jim Harbaugh is your ace. Yeah, Harbaugh, I, a guy that has experience. I'm done with the one-year you know, yeah. rookie head coach. I mean, that's, that's not worked out, and I, I even questioned it when they brought Hackett in. You're trying to pair a guy that's been you know, in the NFL for two days versus – uh, you know Russell Wilson, who's been in the NFL for a long time and has has led an offense, and I just it, I never saw it working out. So um, was I right? I don't know. I guess he, I was. So Harbaugh is your but, top draft. Yeah, Harbaugh. Pick? Yeah. Who's your top draft? Harbaugh pick? or Frank Reich, who I think would Frank be. Frank Reich doesn't bring the spice. Doesn't bring the. No, but again, where where is this franchise? Yeah. You know, you know Russell Wilson. Jim Harbaugh going to come to a division that has Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid with the chip. By the way, they're winning the division. <laughs> They've won it seven years in a row. They're winning it eight more years in a row. So does Harbaugh want to come in here with Russell Wilson? Frank Reich is out of a job. Jim Harbaugh has a good job. I think Frank Reich is the type. And look at his resume with the Colts. Five years, five different starting quarterbacks. Guys, let me, did, let, did, let me. You almost didn't have <laughs> Let me tell you something. Here's how you get anybody. You take out your wallet. Yeah. You get out your, uh, well, this is pathetic, what I have in here. But <laughs> Blockbuster the, the, card. Theoretically, I got a discount tire card. I mean, maybe that'll get me a tire. You, you know what I'm saying, though. You, you break out your money. Who do you and, want, though? Who's at the top of your wish Well, list? to me, it's Jim Harbaugh. He is at the top of my list. And because I, I am looking to, again, I uh, have George Payton not make all the executive decisions. I want somebody when my starting quarterback is 
terrible. And you're down 17 nothing in the first quarter. He's on the bench. He's not still playing in the game. Mm-hmm. I want a sense of competition. So when Baker Mayfield is possibly available, let's have something interesting happening and bring him in. I want you to draft somebody and not throw it away. You realize in the same week that the Rams got Baker Mayfield, the Broncos acquired, do you know who? <laughs> no. Jared Guarantano. Yeah, well, uh, you're, you're, the, you're the ace right there, Mike. Out of, of, out of the Guarantano family. But, but the, the right answer was who yeah. is, the, is the right and answer. He knew the Cardinals playbook more than he knew the Broncos playbook. So that relationship, though, let's talk about, because Russell Wilson is, is certainly one of the 500-pound elephants in the room. Uh, what do you do? You, you have a, a coach who theoretically has a different relationship with Russell Wilson, but is Russell Wilson, the quarterback, salvageable at this point? Do you see that? Is that on no, the horizon? No, we're fooling ourselves. It's, it's done. It's a wrap. You can tell what's going on. So you're on the fence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm on the fence. All right. You know, Russell Wilson, it's just, listen, man, it's, it's a harsh reality, but when these quarterbacks lose it, they lose it quick, and it, it goes like that. There's a reason the Seahawks were trying to deal him as far back as 2017. Talk about winning this deal. The Seattle Seahawks organization cleaned up. So, Mike, how do you get a coach to come in and coach if that is, if what D-Max says is, is widely thought by coaches and GMs around the league? Well, because I'm not sure it is. Right. I mean, there is debate on that. And I, I do think Russell Wilson is fixable in the right system. It's basically what the Rams ran yesterday for Baker Mayfield. You run the ball. There were some beautiful play-action bootlegs for Baker Mayfield. Oh, the Rams put on a clinic yesterday. They, they, they did. And they had the guys running wide open. And... Russell has gotten to the point where he wanted his legacy to go to 45 years old. He wanted to be Peyton Manning. He wanted to be Tom Brady. He didn't want to run anymore and get hit anymore. He wanted to be a pocket quarterback. It's not who he is. You got to convince him he is a two, a dual threat athletic quarterback. And I think he still can be effective in the play to the defense, run the ball, and then pop one, Russell, and keep it alive and win it in the fourth quarter. Oh, he can still do that. Of course, Mike's not wrong, because we've seen it here. It was called Tim Tebow. <laughs> so we want Tebow redo. And that's what they did. They had a Jerry rig a system that fit Tebow the best they could. Successfully, they actually did do it. So you may not be wrong. It's just not what you bought. It's not what you traded for. You didn't trade to Jerry rig a system where you could look worse than Brock Purdy on any given Sunday. Salvageable? Anything left in there? I, I think a little bit. I think what you're talking about is, is pretty accurate. I, I don't see him ever, you know, being a top five quarterback in the NFL again. I think those days are. are He's past. not as quick as he used to be. No, 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 no. But he can still pop a run. You said yeah. it in your in your Christmas list notes uh, <laughs> a couple days ago that that yeah, just just run the ball. I mean, that's yeah. we saw him have a lot of big runs this year. So, just run the ball. Over. I want to ask you guys about what we saw yesterday, though. Uh, that was a team that that didn't play, and that ultimately cost the coach his job. That, that performance yesterday, that roster, that locker room now is, is a problem. Like, so you, the, the culture, once again, has to go through an overhaul. That may include an overhaul of the locker room. I mean, is it, where, is the, 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 where is the player's responsibility, the leadership, as far as what you see for this team? There are no leaders of this team right now. It's, it's hard to define. There'll be a massive roster turnover, and Penner has to make some big-time decisions. Do you really spend the money on Draymond Jones or Dalton Reisner? So, so far, the answer is no on those. And what else are you doing? Who else are you keeping? And you have some really tricky decisions when it comes to Cortland Sutton, who now is maybe your fourth best receiving option, because Jerry Judy is a legitimate player, as is Patrick Sertan. Other than that, Mike would know better about the roster, but there's going to be a massive turnover. To think about any significant leadership with this team is a waste of time. Did, did you see that yesterday, though? That- they were a demoralized um, team. They know they're done. The season is over, and Russ throws picks off the first two series. And, that, that you know, the, the defense, I, I never saw them play like that. I mean, missed tackles yeah. is about spirit. It's about will. It's about desire. They had none of that. Uh, Pat Sertan had very little effort against Higby on that first touchdown. I mean, that's the type of thing that happens when you know – it's over. They were demoralized yesterday. These next two weeks certainly will be noteworthy, but I, I don't know what you'll be able to derive from it or the way the players play, the way Jerry Rosberg runs a team or anything. Uh, but the Nathaniel Hackett brief era is now over. Brief. DMAC, we love the fact you were able to come in today. I know you're normally busy this time of day, but thanks for joining us, Mike and Jacob. I always 
enjoy chatting with you guys in the office. It was nice to share some of that with our folks here today. Uh, we're going to wrap up 4 o'clock at 9 News when we come back.